Hey everyone, thanks for uh, joining my talk. My name is Ned Belvance and I'm going to be presenting on how to use Vault's Azure authentication with Azure VMs. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I thought since not everyone is a Vault expert that is, you know, attending this talk, I would go just briefly over some of the core concepts within Vault Server just to make sure everyone's on the same level. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Vault, uh, Vault is a product from HashiCorp, uh, and its main purpose is to store and manage the lifecycle of secrets. So in the center, we've got Vault Server. And of course, Vault Server doesn't live in an island. There are going to be clients that want to communicate with Vault Server. And there can be different types of clients. You could have users, you could have some sort of application or service, or you could have workstations or virtual machines that want to gain access to what Vault is storing for its secrets. And the way that they interact with Vault Server is by accessing it via an API front end. So the only way to talk to Vault Server is that API. Now on the back end, like I said, Vault Server is storing one or more secrets within its encrypted barrier. And in order to get to those secrets, you would want to authenticate your clients in some way. So Vault also has the idea of authentication methods that can be enabled. So you can say, I trust this external identity source to provide authentication for one of these clients. That's gonna be key to what we're doing in the demonstration. Once a client has been successfully authenticated, they will be assigned one or more policies. And the policies describe what that client is able to do with things on the Vault server, including secrets. So what secrets do they have access to and what can they do with that secret? Can they read it? Can they update it? Can they delete it, etc.? The mechanism by which the clients interact with Vault once they've successfully authenticated is by using a token. And so all further communication once they're authenticated includes this token, which defines things like what policies are assigned to that client. And the token also has a lifetime associated with it, so the client will eventually have to re-authenticate. And then finally, all of this highly sensitive information being stored on Vault, you're probably going to want to keep track of what is happening there. And so all requests and responses can be logged to one or more audit devices. So there's a whole auditing module as well. So that's some of the core concepts of Vault. I just wanted to get those out of the way very quickly. Now let's move into kind of what we're doing in our scenario. So for our Azure VM scenario, what I have done is I've set up a few subnets within a virtual network in Azure. And We've got a Vault subnet, a console subnet, and a web server subnet. In the Vault subnet, you won't be surprised to find out there is a Vault server there, which is also running the console agent. And that console agent is talking to a console serve that's sitting in the console subnet. Console is serving as the storage backend to Vault. There's a number of different backends that are supported by Vault for storage. Uh, console is just one of the simpler ones to set up and configure, and it's supported by HashiCorp uh, rather than the community. So I just went with that out of the box, but you could choose whatever storage backend works for you. And I've configured network security groups to allow communication between the two subnets so that Vault can use console for storage. On the front end of the Vault subnet, I've given the Vault server a public IP address and associated a public DNS entry of vault.azslab.us, which is a domain I happen to have, and so it kind of worked for this scenario. And then lastly, in the web server subnet, naturally I've got web servers, and those web servers are going to want to retrieve secrets from the Vault server. So they're going to be sending communication out of the web server subnet and to the public IP address of the Vault server. And the Vault server and the web servers don't necessarily have to live in the same Azure tenant or VNet. It was just convenient for the purposes of this demonstration. So that's the basic setup that we have for our scenario. 
Now, what are we going to be doing within that scenario? So, like I said before, we have web servers and they need to retrieve secrets for their application or their boot up or whatever they need the secrets for. They wanna get secrets out of Vault. So we need to set up a few components on the different sides. So the green box represents what is going on in Vault and the orange box represents what's going on in Azure. So in the green box, we're gonna to have to enable the Azure authentication method. And then in addition to the authentication method, we're going to have to define a policy within that authentication method that's assigned to clients that successfully authenticate. And that policy is going to grant them access to a set of secrets, the secrets that the web server wants to get to. On the Azure side of things, we're gonna be using Azure Active Directory, a tenant in Azure Active Directory, to provide that trusted authentication that Vault is gonna rely on. And in order for Vault to verify that an authentication is successful, it's going to have a service principle within that Azure AD tenant that gives it access to validate when a client is saying that it has successfully authenticated. And then in order for clients, in this case, Azure virtual machines to authenticate properly, they're gonna be using what's called the managed security identity, which is a basically a service account that the Azure VMs can get uh, when they boot up and then they can use that service account to access other things in Azure AD or get an authentication token. So let's go ahead and set up the Vault Server components and then come back and look at what the workflow looks like for this. All right, so we're gonna do the code portion of this using Visual Studio Code and I've got pretty much all of the demo instructions in the top pane because I'm a terrible typist and no one wants to watch me fumble around a keyboard. Uh, so you remember from the previous graphic, one of the first things we need to do is create that service principle within Azure AD. And in order to do that, we need to get some information. So the first thing that we like to do is get information about the subscription that we're gonna be creating a service principle for and assigning a role to. So we'll run account show, and that will give us some information about one of the subscriptions I have. Uh, and we're gonna need the ID. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that in here to store it later. We're also gonna need it here for this command, so I'm gonna drop it there too. And we need the tenant ID, which is the ID of the Azure AD instance and we're gonna need that information a little bit later as well. So we've got those two. Now, the next thing that we're going to be doing is running this big long command. And essentially what it is doing is it's creating a service principle named Vault Hugs, and we're giving it the role of contributor. And the scope of that role is for the subscription that we just queried against. And there we go. So now it's created that service principle and assigned it that role and returned back some information to us. We need the app ID. That's kind of the equivalent of the username for this service principle. And we also need the password, which is the equivalent of the password. Now in the parlance of Vault, it calls it Azure Client ID and Azure Client Secret, but that's basically the username and password, right? That's pretty straightforward. So now we have all the information we need to, to uh, assign that service principle to the Vault server. So let's go over to a separate window. I've got a uh, SSH session already going with the Vault server. I'm already logged in to the Vault instance. So now we can set some of these values that we just exported from the Azure CLI. So I'm going ahead and export those two values and now grab these two and export those as well. All right, so we're all set. Now the next thing we need to do is enable that Azure method. So we are gonna run vault auth enable Azure. And what that does is enable the Azure authentication method at the path Azure. So by default, if you don't specify a path, it uses the name of the authentication method. Now that we have it enabled, we need to configure it. And the configuration information it needs is, give me the tenant ID, because I need to know which Azure AD instance I'm using, and then give me the service principle information so I can authenticate against that tenant. And since we're using public Azure, we're using the resource management.azure.com. If you're using like one of the special GovClouds or something, that management 
uh, URL might be different. So we'll go ahead and run this command and that has now successfully configured the Azure authentication method. Now remember those web servers are gonna want to get a secret out of the Vault server. So we're going to enable a new secrets engine at the path webkv of key value type. And then we're going to put a secret in that new secrets engine. The name of the secret is webpass and within that we're storing password equals hugs for all. Aw, isn't that nice? Now, remember the other component of this is a policy. We want to grant the web servers access to get that secret via a policy. And we're gonna be doing that through a file called webpol to define that policy. So let's see what's in that actual file. And if you look down, basically what we're saying is in the path webkv slash star. So anything that's in that path, we want to grant the capabilities of read and list to anything that's assigned this policy. So we're gonna go ahead and run this command which creates the policy and names it web. Now we have our policy, we have our authentication method. Now we gotta kinda stitch it all together and say, how do I assign that to one of those web servers? Well, that's where we create a role. And the purpose of that role is to assign a policy. So in the policy setting, we're saying web. You could list multiple policies, but we only want one in this case. And then how do we know where to assign that role? So the bound subscription ID defines what subscription IDs might get this policy. And so we wanna use the subscription ID that we already stored. And then the bound resource group says any resource that is part of this resource group in this subscription, I want to grant this policy to. And our web servers are going to be part of that resource group. So let's go ahead and run all of this mess. There we go, we've successfully created our role. So as far as the vault server is considered, all of that work is now done. Now we can flip over to another SSH session that I have with the web server. And why don't I kick off the apt update and install? We're gonna install Nginx and JQ on here. I'm gonna go ahead and kick those two off and then we can step through what the workflow is gonna be for it to authenticate and retrieve that secret. So just kick that off and go back. Okay, so what's the workflow look like for this? Well, the web servers are gonna to talk to Azure AD and say, hey man, I need a token. I need to authenticate something else. So give me a token. And Azure AD is gonna see that it's a part of a managed security identity and say, sure, you got it, man. Here's your token with your authentication uh, access token included in the response. You can go ahead and use that. Have a great day. Web Server says, awesome. And then it takes that token, does some transformation with it, and then sends a new request to the Azure authentication method on the Vault server with a JSON payload containing that token as well as some additional information. The Azure authentication method checks back with Azure AD and says, yep, you're all good. You're in this subscription ID. You are in this resource group. I'm going to give you this policy. And it gives it the web policy along with a vault token. And that policy and token grant it access to go and grab that WebKV web pass secret that we stored earlier. So that's the overall workflow of what we're going to see with some of the commands. All right, good. So the install has completed, thank goodness. Uh, next thing, I just want to open that firewall port for Nginx so we can see uh, something on port 80. Cool, that's done. And then I would want to export the value of the vault server uh, just because it's easier than typing it out. Um, so now we want to get some information from the metadata service that exists for Azure VMs. The metadata service is hosted at a special address and it allows Azure VMs to get information about themselves from Azure. So by running this curl command at this special address, we're pulling some information down. And if we run echo metadata, 
and pipe that through JQ just to make it a little easier to read, you'll see there's a bunch of information about this VM in here that it collected about itself. So it knows what the resource group name is, the subscription ID, and its virtual machine name. We're gonna need all of that information to go talk to Vault, especially the resource group name and the subscription ID. Remember, that's how it determines what role to give us. So we're gonna extract those three values out of that metadata response. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've extracted those values. Now we need to get that access token from Azure AD. And again, we're using the metadata uh, special metadata service and address, but the path is a little bit different. Now we're hitting identity OAuth to token and requesting a token from Azure AD. So let's go ahead and run that. And if we look at what is in the response, and pipe that through JQ as well, it gives us this really long string, which is the access token. That's the information we need. That's the, that's the thing that the Azure authentication method on Vault is going to want. So we're gonna extract just that value from the response and put it in a temporary variable named JWT. Now, I have a file on here called authpayload.json and that is the authentication payload. And if we take a look at what's in there, I've got placeholders for all of these values. So I'm going to make a copy of that file and then run these said commands to substitute the correct value for the placeholders that are in that file. So I'll go ahead and do that. And in a real life scenario, you might have that auth payload JSON as part of your web server image and then just copy it like I just did and place the proper values in there without overwriting the original file. Now we have our payload all set and we're ready to talk to the Vault server to log in. So we're gonna do a post request against the Vault server and pass it this completed JSON payload to the path auth Azure login. And when we do that, if I've set everything up correctly, I should get a login token back. So let's just do, uh, see what's in there. And sure enough, I got a role of web role, I got the policy of web, and I got a client token to do further access against the vault server. So now I want to extract that client token and place it in a variable of vault token so I can use that for future requests to vault server. And last but not least, let's try to get that password that was stored in there. So I am going to issue a new request against the Vault server using my newly minted Vault token. And I'm going to be requesting the information that's stored at WebKV web pass and parse that through JQ just to extract the password value that's within there. And if we do an echo of web pass now, we can see we got the password and we got what we wanted. It's hugs for all. Uh, and then if we were, you know, setting up a web server, we might take that value and put it on a web page for some reason. We can go ahead and do that. And if we copy that newly minted file to here and restart Nginx, that should now be the web page on our web dash zero server. Let's jump over to the Azure portal. This is our web zero virtual machine. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the public IP address for that. And let's go to HTTP IP address. And there we go. The secret passphrase is hugs for all. So just to recap, we were able to authenticate an Azure VM to Vault using the managed security identity and then retrieve a secret. And what we did was fairly trivial in terms of what we were retrieving, but you can imagine the different use cases that would apply for using this type of setup. So that's it. That's my talk. Thanks everyone. Again, I'm Ned Bellavance. If you want to know anything more about me, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Ned1313. I'm an author on Pluralsight. I have a course about Vault coming out um, pretty much any day now. 
Uh, I also blog at nedinthecloud.com, and I've got a podcast called Buffer Overflow that you can find in the iTunes store. Thanks again, and enjoy the rest of Hashi Talks.